This definitely has to be one of the most frequent questions I get asked. I'm not ovulating. What supplements can I take? So in choosing supplements, you first have to understand why you are not ovulating. There are several reasons and I talked about it in a previous video. I'll link that somewhere in the description so you can understand better. Now, once you're able to find the root cause, only then can you begin to consider supplements. Because what works for Madam A may not work for Madam B. So there are a few things to consider. Stephanie here, your psycho coach, and this is what I'll be discussing in this video. I'd like to add that if you're trying to conceive, consider getting a prenatal supplement with all the extra vitamins you need in addition to what I'll be listing here. Secondly, supplements are for support. So it is not the foundation for a healthy cycle. You still need to exercise. You still need to manage your stress levels and eat healthy for good and lasting results. Lastly, a disclaimer, of course, this video only suggests based on my experience from using some of these supplements myself and for some clients with whom I've gotten results. So what am I saying in essence? Always consult your doctor or a health professional before starting any supplement. So number one is Vitex Chasteberry. It's one of the most common supplements. It works very well. Personally, I've used it and had my cycle move from 35, 37 days to about 30 days. So it works like magic. Now, if you are having very long cycles, it is very likely that you are not ovulating. Vitex helps to increase the production of your reproductive hormones. Essentially, it facilitates the communication between your brain and your ovaries. It is a herb, natural, but can take as long as three to six months before you begin to see changes. You'll need to exercise patience. It is not advised if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. If you're undergoing IVF as well, it is also not advised. It can cause overstimulation of the ovaries. Now, because it increases the luteinizing hormone, it is not advised for women with PCOS with already high levels of the luteinizing hormone. It may not be best for you. What then can you use if you have PCOS? That's what I'll be discussing next. Now, chestberry also works very well in reducing the level of prolactin hormone. So in some women, they have very high levels of prolactin hormone. These hormones interfere with the production of the hormones you need for ovulation. So chaseberry works very well in reducing the level of this hormone so you can begin ovulating. Number two, inositol. So inositol works very well to support ovulation in women with PCOS. Our body makes inositol. It is believed that most women with PCOS are insulin resistant about 70 percent of women with pcos have this kind of pcos there are different kinds of pcos right there are also factors to consider before a woman says she has pcos so it is not only from scans like many people say oh i did a scan and it showed i had polycystic ovaries that's not enough to say you have pcos so i also have another video where i talked about it how to know if you have pcos the steps to take and the tests you need to do i'll link that somewhere you can check in the description for the link to that video so the ideal way your body works is you eat certain foods that increase blood sugar your body senses it and then it releases insulin insulin then helps to get the glucose to muscles and cells to either store or use for energy after which your blood sugar reduces and the signal is sent to your pancreas to stop the production of insulin since the job is now completed but in women with insulin resistant PCOS, it doesn't work that way. So you eat foods that raise your blood sugar, blood sugar goes up, insulin is released, but it is not used up and remains in the system. So insulin remains very high, causing the body to produce too much testosterone from the ovaries. And when this happens, it affects the ovulation process. It becomes impossible for the body to get to ovulate because the luteinizing hormone to follicle stimulating hormone ratio is not balanced so inositol works by improving insulin sensitivity in other words your body becomes able to use up the insulin to reduce blood sugar levels that's how inositol works so the level of your testosterone reduces your luteinizing hormone to follicle stimulating hormone ratio is improved bringing about hormonal balance and ovulation starts again now guess what it also aids weight loss so with pcos supplements work perfectly 
with adjusting your diet so you also have to adjust your diet it's not just taking supplements right and a few other lifestyle changes you need to make so there are different types of inositol a good blend that works very well includes the two types myo inositol and the chiro inositol in the ratio of 40 to 1. now the next supplement is ubiquinol or coq10 it is an antioxidant that helps with cellular energy generation the production of egg and sperm requires a great deal of energy within cells ubiquinol is available in our bodies but as you age it reduces good thing is men and women can take it, it improves both egg and sperm quality generally as you age in your mid-30s as a lady your hormones fluctuate which will cause you to ovulate in some months and not ovulate in other months until you stop ovulating completely that is as you enter menopause taking coq10 in addition to your prenatal supplement depending on your age will help to aid ovulation and the quality of eggs you produce so before you buy a supplement always take the time to read the label to know what it contains and how it works right again consult your health professional for the right dosage when it comes to supplementation dosage plays a huge role in order for it to be effective in subsequent videos i'll be reviewing a few supplement brands so if you haven't subscribed do well to click the subscribe button there are a number of resources to help you master your menstrual cycle whether or not you're trying to conceive or you just want your periods to go back to being regular check beneath this video or use the link in the description and in the next video i'll be talking about the different types of pcos knowing the type helps in choosing the right treatment plan see you then